He is a man of imagination such as is rarely granted to us, and he has evolved for the utterance of that imagination a craftsmanship that can call his imaginings onto the canvas with astounding skill of handling. He had a vivid and fertile imagination, but it was combined with a wicked sense of humour. He rarely wanted to just illustrate a text. His real aim was to mystify the viewer. It's one of those little discoveries, this, this gallery, where you, you hit upon it and you, at first you think, hmm, it's sort of, uh, it's interesting. And then you look deeper and you find it much more fascinating. And then you look a bit deeper and you go, wow, there's the quality and the, the extent of the work is just amazing. And uh, it just brings you in and intrigues you and intrigues me and everybody that sees it. Sidney Syme was a unique character in the world of 1890s illustration. He was a very technically accomplished artist, and especially in black and white. He'd started his working life as a pit boy down a coal mine, and he spent five years there, and I think that influenced, influenced his view of the world. He saw things with a very underground sense. He then worked for a linen draper and then went on to become a sign painter. And he became self-employed. And this enabled him eventually to enter the Liverpool School of Art. Uh, he um, went there in 1884 and did exceptionally well. He had um, prizes, he had um, medals for his fine draftsmanship and also his anatomy, which was excellent. In 1888, he passed on from the Liverpool School of Art and he thought, well, what would a young artist do to earn his living? He decided the place he could earn a living was in London, working for the magazines. Amongst Syme's earliest published drawings were a series that he made for Pick Me Up magazine under the title of Ye Shades. And these featured um, people who'd been sent to hell, basically. And they all arrived dressed in Greek dress. And we've got an example of something in that style here. This is three characters who've been excluded from hell and they look very happy about it. Another strange series of pictures that he made, this time for Pall Mall magazine, were illustrations of children's nursery rhymes. Here we see the old woman who lived in a shoe. And Syme has chosen not to show the shoe, but the very sound beating that the children got. Once again, we see Syme's sense of mystery and his very idiosyncratic view of storytelling. Sydney Symes, in my opinion, um, every time I come up here, and I have been up here a lot in the last um, 10 years, Every time I come up here, I find something different about him. He's so clever. I've had people been up here while well, people have come up here, but parties have been up here, and they've said, I can see that, that's modern. And some of the pictures do relate to the modern time. So he was way before his time, as I'm sure people have said before. Although his drawings are often menacing, he, he intercut that with a sense of the absurd. So you'll find his eastern priest, mysterious character, will be wearing national health spectacles or um, looming mountains and dismal skies and huts on the mountainside and then there'll be someone walking across with a bucket and a mop. We are very fortunate, and I am in particular as a trustee here, that we have a wealth of drawings, illustrations, caricatures, paintings by an extraordinary artist in Sydney Syme. Little known really at his era, mostly Edwardian and Victorian, but his widow Mary 
bequeathed this gallery and all the paintings that she held, and there are over 800 here, to the village. And we have visitors literally from all over the world that visit this, but it is little known and we are in the process of restoring a lot of the paintings and creating a gallery which we hope will welcome more people in the future. If Simon had a fault, I think it was that he didn't know when to stop working on his drawings. The best ones are the ones that were taken away from him and published. But even then, he would get prints of those drawings and keep working over them and working over them. And so certainly some of the things that are here in the museum, you can see he's just gone too far and they're almost obliterated. A lot of them are quite uh, complicated paintings and they're complicated structures of paintings. He, he used to use a lot of layers of, uh, of, of different sorts of paints and glazes on his pictures. You know, in some he's used gold leaf right at the, uh, the base of the paintings and then built up on top of that. Others he is, he is just done numerous layers of the pictures so that they, they are quite complicated but they're quite also complicated and clean but they also deteriorate quite uh, easily because there's so many layers and they, the layers, different layers interact with each other and so you get a certain amount of cracking uh, and then the dirt layers go on and there's more cracking and, uh, and uh, they're, so they're, they're quite difficult to start off with to, to clean because of the, the problems of the, the nature of what is done. Roughly, it's about analysing the surface of the uh, the painting and just to see uh, what what the layers are and what what layers of dirt are on the surface or varnish and everything like that, and then gradually uh, taking initially off the dirt off the surface of the painting, and then uh, and, and then taking the varnishes off and then uh, trying to get back to down to the original paint without taking any of these very thin layers of paint off which he, he puts on. Uh, and that's, that's, it's always quite complicated to know what is dirt and what is paint with his paintings because they're quite dark and uh, you know there's a very fine line between taking the paint off and the dirt off so you just got to be ultra careful and check your, your swabs as you're working to, to check there's no paint coming off and, uh, and just be very cautious and careful. <laughs> And so you, it's, it's trying to uh, bring the original colours out, yet still keep the age and the, uh, the, 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 the feeling that they're, you know, they're, not, they're not new paintings. Really. So that you know, there's a sort of balance between getting the dirt off and making it look too new. <laughs>